First off, my opponent mentions in their speech that raising the minimum wage wouldn't work because many states have a minimum wage that is already above $7.25. The above the $7.25 is already mentioned. However, he does not mention or include any, any evidence of the rates of poverty in the states that possess a higher minimum wage, or talk about the effects of the raise on poverty. Similarly, he does not include evidence that raising the minimum wage would not reduce poverty. He instead focuses on the difference in how much a specific amount of money is worth in different states. <clears throat> His citation from Pew Research Center states, using the RPPs for 2013, the biggest gap was in Illinois, the price level in metropolitan Chicago, while only 6.6% above the national average is 34.6% is above the price level in Danville, a small city about 140 miles to the south. That is the second cheapest place to live in the nation, not far behind Illinois are California and New York, where the most expensive metro areas are 33.2% and 31.9% higher, respectively, than the least expensive places. While this, while this claim talks about the difference in monetary value between specific states, it does not connect back to his significance claim, and similarly does not prove that his significance claim is even valid. Um, he also does not include any information on how states having the current higher rate affects poverty in any way. Furthermore, on addressing his claim, the higher minimum wages in these states do not address the national issue of poverty all around the United States. Many other states will still suffer with poverty due to low minimum wages. According to an article from World Atlas, many of these states, with the, many of the states with the highest rates of poverty in the USA are located um, are located in the country's deep south, and these include West Virginia, Kentucky, and Louisiana. These states are ones that don't have a higher minimum wage, and they are ones suffering the worst um, with some of the worst poverty rates. The issue of poverty is one that is faced nationally and needs to be addressed nationally, not just state by state. He then goes on to mention that people working minimum wage jobs actually make tips that even out their pay. However, the quote he uses states that, note, a substantially larger share of workers earning below the minimum wage work in the leisure and hospitality sector than workers who are paid exactly the minimum wage. This is because federal law allows restaurants to pay hourly rates below the minimum wage, provided their employees earn more than the minimum wage after tips. This shows that these workers aren't even making the minimum wage to begin with, meaning if they don't get the tips, that night or even that week, they have fallen even further behind in the amount of money they are making, which becomes detrimental when one's life is below the poverty line. A quote from Columbia University states, the investigators found that approximately 245,000 deaths in the United States in the year 2000 were attributed to low levels of education, 176,000 to racial segregation, 162,000 to low social support, 133,000 to individual level poverty, 119,000 to income inequality, and 39,000 to an area level poverty. Overall, 4.5% of, of, of U.S. deaths were found to be attributed to poverty, midway between previous estimates six, of 6% 6 and 2.3%. However, the risk associated with both poverty and low education were higher for individuals 25 to 64 rather than those 65 and older. These deaths occur when one does not have money or access to basic health necessities and cannot afford health insurance. This illustrates how de detrimental it is for someone under the poverty line to make as much money as possible and the dangers that occur when they don't. Lastly, my opponent addresses how he believes that states should have a right to pick their own federal minimum wages. He uses a quote that says, a federal minimum wage set high enough to help people in high cost states would be so high that it would have a big negative effect, impact on low skilled workers in the low cost states. Conversely, a minimum wage set low enough to not be detrimental to workers in low cost states would do little for those in the high cost states because so many already make much more than that. This point actually helps with the affirmative claim as well. If states make the wage, they run the risk of keeping the wage the same and not raising it. Therefore, the problem of low wage workers still living in poverty is not addressed. However, if we raise the minimum wage from $7.25 to $10, as mentioned before in my speech, um, raising the minimum wage $10.10 .10 an hour, as many Democrats are proposing, would reduce the number of people living in poverty by 4.6 million. Therefore, raising the minimum wage to $10 would, in fact, reduce poverty. Thank you.